Richard, tell me about this year's Proteus Parade. The theme for Proteus 2020 is Feast and Libations, which is, uh, as far as Proteus goes, a pretty accessible theme because sometimes we're accused of being a little too heady. Accused. But we, <laughs> <laughs> but we uh, you know, we, we always try to uh, make something that's really traditional, something that could have been a parade in the 1800s or early 20th century. Uh, it's decidedly not contemporary. But uh, I think there's a lot in it uh, that people can identify with because particularly in New Orleans, everybody loves to eat and drink, and that's really what it's all about. Any particular quotes that stick out in your mind? Well, I like the, the Feast of St. Joseph float. Uh, New Orleans has a big tradition of St. Joseph altars, and there's a lot of imagery from that. There's some good uh, floats about the, some libations, yeah. like uh, we have a nice champagne float oh. and, and a really sparkly absinthe float. And, you know, some other things that are nods to traditions that are related to carnivals, like we have a Buffgraf float and a Twelfth Night float, mm -hmm. and it all kind of fits in under Feast, the umbrella yeah. of the theme. Sure, sure. Take me back to the beginning of Proteus. I know it's the oldest night parade, but tell me, what makes it different? Well, Proteus is, what we think, uh, defines what a traditional parade is. You know, Proteus and Rex, I think, we really kind of share a style. And we've tried to emulate what's going on with Rex to a degree that yeah. <laughs> they came looking for us. Yeah. And uh, so it, it's, it's very traditional. Um, it all looks hand painted. It, it is you know, all done by hand. Uh, we, we do a lot with the cutouts and the flowers and things like that. And the floats are on chassis that are over 100 years old. And tell me about those wheels, those wonderful wooden wheels. The wheels, the wheels have been uh, mostly rebuilt in recent years by um, a gentleman who practices the dying art of wooden wheel building. Yeah. Out of, he's based out of Texas. Uh -huh. And um, they really define what, what these floats are. And they're very proud, the crew is very proud of their wooden wheels. Mm -hmm. And they are kind of high maintenance, yeah. but it's very unique and it's one of the traditions they like to uphold. It gives kind of a bumpy ride for the people on the float, but tell me about the look that those wooden wheels and New Orleans streets combined to okay. provide. Sure, the, the bumpiness is, it can go both ways, you know, it, but you can be maybe a little bit uncomfortable for the rider, but then it's also uh, great for kind of bringing the floats to life. So we, it kind of, we have a lot of articulated decorations that move around kind of passively when the float's shaking and bopping down the street. Yeah, you call that, I think, a soft animation or something like Passive that? Passive animation. Passive animation. Yes. Great, great word. Um, in, in the history of Carnival, how do you place Proteus? I know it's the oldest night parade, but it, I mean, it's really very historic and, and very significant in the whole history of Mardi Gras, don't you think? Sure, yes, it is. It, it really defines what traditional parade is. Um, you know, you can't get any more traditional than this than yeah. Rex. Yeah. And we... Uh, I think the parade has always striven, you know, always had, has had a vision to be, you know, a beautiful spectacle for the people. And it, that's quite a, a double header on Lundigar, isn't it, this? And then you're followed by Orpheus, which is a new style parade. But back to back, we see 300 years of parading history on, on that Monday night. Right. Well, I would say Orpheus is, is kind of old school on steroids. You know, they really go, go heavy on the flowers and the cutouts and, the, and, and their style is... I think very much inspired by the traditional styles of the